Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. Today we are getting the day two reactions after Apple's big Apple intelligence announcement, which is of course its AI strategy finally revealed. The TLDR on the whole presentation is that Apple is very much courting a normie audience. They are focused on a story about AI that is all about simple utility for day-to-day -day functioning, saving you time, making things easier, making things just work better. The centerpiece remains Siri, which finally kind of looks like it might act the way that people would expect it to. It's going to be able to take actions on people's behalves and plug into the entire suite of apps, pushing us towards a mode of human-computer interaction where everything is mediated by a single assistant app. Part of the way that it is able to do that is because it has all of what Apple calls our personal context. It can read our email, see what we're looking at on screen, go into any of the applications we've authorized and pull data from there. And if that sounds like a privacy boondoggle to you, you are not alone. In fact, Apple knew that this was going to be a central question and spent a huge amount of their presentation focused on privacy. On their Apple Intelligence preview page, a headline reads, Great powers come with great privacy. Apple Intelligence is designed to protect your privacy at every step. It's integrated into the core of your iPhone, iPad, and Mac through on-device processing. So it's aware of your personal information without collecting your personal information. And with groundbreaking private cloud compute, Apple Intelligence can draw on larger server-based models running on Apple Silicon to handle more complex requests for you while protecting your privacy. So this private cloud compute is a big part of what Apple is selling to us here. We knew that they were going to offer a lot on device so they could get access to that information without storing it anywhere, but private cloud compute is their new approach for dealing with issues that require more computation than is available on device. They say of private cloud compute that your data is never stored, that it's used only for your requests, and that there is a verifiable privacy promise. Today we're going to be talking about this privacy question and whether Apple can thread this very difficult needle between we protect your privacy, but we're looking at everything about your life as well. Coverage in media has mostly been positive, or at least giving Apple the benefit of the doubt. Ars Technica points to a publicly reviewable server code as the way that Apple says that experts can verify the privacy promise. Fast Company writes that Apple's commitment to data privacy could pay off big with its AI. They say, whereas customers of other AI companies may not trust that AI systems won't leak their data or use it in unauthorized ways, they're likely to trust Apple. The idea here being, of course, that this is not a new position for Apple, that they have focused on trust at the center of their brand for more than a decade now, which was, of course, enabled by the fact that they didn't need to use users' data to sell it to advertisers for their business model to work. Bilawal Sidhu, the host of the new TED Talks AI show, pointed out that people's initial reaction was positive. He tweeted, Apple's reality distortion field is strong. It's kind of wild that with semantic index, Apple is basically doing what Microsoft wants to do with AI recall and copilot and without any of the other big brother backlash. Semantic index means all your private content, messages, emails, photos, videos, calendar events, screen contacts, etc. is processed and can be queried by AI models. It's basically Apple's version of AI recall. Get iOS 18 and you're opted into these AI features by default but it comes with a great Apple privacy narrative. Meanwhile, Microsoft fumbled the ball talking about intermittent screenshots and photographic memory, lol. Bilawal then goes on to ask a couple of questions. Is it possible to opt out of these features? How much of the semantic index is generated locally versus in the cloud? How much of the semantic index do third-party providers get access to when you send a query? And is user data used to improve Apple's AI models? He later followed up with a positive assessment of the private cloud compute. He tweeted, Apple's private cloud computing actually takes confidential computing to the next level. It's so secure that they can't even comply with law enforcement requests. No data retention, unlike every other cloud provider. No privileged access, even Apple SREs can't see your data even if they wanted to. Custom hardware and an operating system. Non-targetability. And verifiable transparency that allows researchers to inspect software images to check assurances and find issues. He says, seems like Apple has been working on this well before the Gen AI project, presumably for cloud processing of sensitive data off AR glasses. So barring getting hardware access, in which case RIP, no matter if it's in the cloud or your phone, Apple has set the new standard for privacy in the cloud. However, this was far from the only take. Maybe the most viewed take on this whole issue was when Elon Musk tweeted, if Apple integrates OpenAI at the OS level, then Apple devices will be banned at my companies. That is an unacceptable security violation. That tweet was viewed 66.7 million times. Elon continued, visitors will have to check their Apple devices at the door where they will be stored in a Faraday cage. Later, he also tweeted, it's patently absurd that Apple isn't smart enough to make their own AI, yet is somehow capable of ensuring that OpenAI will protect your security and privacy. Apple has no clue what's actually going on once they hand your data over to OpenAI. They're selling you down the river. That one got 27.6 million views, but it also did get community noted. With the community adding, Apple has developed their foundation models which run on device locally and have approximately 3 billion parameters. 
For tasks that require more compute, Apple uses either private cloud compute, open to verify for privacy, or open AI with an additional confirmation. The information pimp points out the skepticism that many people have of Elon's posting, writing, Elon has posted 24 times today about the Apple and OpenAI thing, which is insanely funny. He's presenting it as a privacy concern, but we all know he's malding over the fact that no one uses Grok. But to be fair, Elon isn't the only one with some concerns. Carla Ortiz writes, Apple intelligence is here and zero questions of where does the data come from to be seen in the press. Apple is trying to shove a huge privacy risk in tech that screams scraped off the internet without consent to the public. And even people who support Apple noted that this question of privacy is going to be a big one when it comes to how successful this launch is. Steven Sanofsky of A16Z optimistically writes, With on-device computing and privacy features, Apple could have a whole new cachet and appeal for consumers. Although he then points to the fact that market actors seem skeptical, with Apple shares falling 2%, which was their worst performance on the day of a WWDC keynote in 11 years. But what do actual security experts think? Matthew Green, who teaches cryptography at Johns Hopkins, wrote a long thread, which I'll read a big excerpt from here. Matthew says, So Apple has introduced a new system called Private Cloud Compute that allows your phone to offload complex tasks to specialized secure devices in the cloud. I'm still trying to work out what I think about this. Apple, unlike most other mobile providers, has traditionally done a lot of processing on device. For example, all of machine learning and OCR text recognition on photos is done right on your device. The problem is that while modern phone neural hardware is improving, it's not improving fast enough to take advantage of all the crazy features Silicon Valley wants from modern AI, including generative AI and its ilk. This fundamentally requires servers. But if you send your tasks out to servers in the cloud, this means sending incredibly private data off your phone and out over the internet. That exposes you to spying, hacking, and data-hungry business models of Silicon Valley. The solution Apple has come up with is to try to build secure and trustworthy hardware in their own data centers. Your phone can outsource heavy tasks to this hardware. Seems easy, right? TLDR, it is not easy. Building trustworthy computers is literally the hardest problem in computer security. Honestly, it's almost the only problem in computer security. But while it remains a challenging problem, we've made a lot of advances. Apple is using almost all of them. The first thing Apple is doing is using all the advances they've made in building secure phones and PCs in their new servers. This involves using secure boot and a secure Enclave processor or SCP to hold keys. They presumably turned on all the processor security features. Then they're throwing all kinds of processes at the server hardware to make sure the hardware isn't tampered with. I can't tell if this prevents hardware attacks, but it seems like a start. They also use a bunch of protections to ensure that software is legitimate. One is that the software is stateless and allegedly doesn't keep information between user requests. To help ensure this, each server node reboot, rekeys, and wipes all storage. A second protection is that the operating system can attest to the software image it's running. Specifically, it signs a hash of the software and shares this with every phone and client. If you trust this infrastructure, you'll know it's running a specific piece of software. Of course, knowing the phone is running a specific piece of software doesn't help you if you don't trust the software. So Apple plans to put each binary image into a transparency login and publish the software. But here's a sticky point, not with the full source code. Security researchers will get some code and a VM they can use to run the software. They'll then have to reverse engineer the binaries to see if they're doing unexpected things. It's a little suboptimal. When your phone wants to outsource a task, it will contact Apple and obtain a list of servers and nodes and their keys. It will then encrypt its request to all servers, and one will process it. They're even using fancy anonymous credentials in a third-party relay to hide your IP. Okay, there are probably half a dozen more technical details in the blog post. It's a very thoughtful design. Indeed, if you gave an excellent team a huge pile of money and told them to build the best private cloud in the world, it would probably look like this. But now the tough questions. Is it a good idea? And is it as secure as what Apple does today? And most importantly, can users opt out entirely from this feature? I admit that as I learned about this feature, it made me kind of sad. The thought that was going through my head was, this is going to be too much of a temptation. Once you can safely outsource tasks to the cloud, why bother doing them locally? Outsource everything. As best as I can tell, Apple does not have explicit plans to announce when your data is going off device for private compute. You won't opt into this. You won't even necessarily be told it's happening. It will just happen, magically. I don't love that part. Finally, there are so many invisible sharp edges that could exist in a system like this. Hardware flaws, issues with the cryptographic attenuation framework, clever software exploits. Many of these will be hard for security researchers to detect. That worries me too. Wrapping up on a more positive note, it's worth keeping in mind that sometimes the perfect is the enemy of the really good. In practice, the alternative to on-device is ship private data to open AI or someplace sketchier, where who knows what might happen to it. And of course, keep in mind that super spies aren't your biggest adversary. For many people, your biggest adversary is the company who sold you your device and software. This private cloud compute system represents a real commitment by Apple not to peek at your data, and that's a big deal. In any case, this is the world we're moving to. Your phone might seem to be in your pocket, but a part of it lives 2,000 miles away in a data center. As security folks, we probably need to get used to that fact and do the best we can to make sure all parts are secure. El Cam Tuff summed up, Three things can be simultaneously true. It's a major improvement from the infrastructure security standpoint. It doesn't confer any bulletproof assurances to you, the consumer. 
and it's a step back if it blurs the PR line between keeping your stuff local and in the cloud. Ultimately, as Matthew says, this is the world we're heading into. I think all of these questions are important, otherwise why would I cover it on a full show? But I think ultimately when it comes to consumers, it's going to be a lot of hand-wringing. Now, if anything can make them take seriously the questions of privacy, it will be generative AI given how much discourse is around data and privacy in the public sphere. But so far, when it comes to the trade-off between convenience and privacy, it's very clear which one most consumers make. As Simon Willison puts, some of the backlash I'm seeing against Apple is reinforcing my opinion. The hardest problem in computer science continues to be convincing an AI skeptic that you're not going to steal their data and train an AI model on it. Apple is betting that if anyone can do that, it's them. That is going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Until next time, peace.